Good morning, fruit lovers, and welcome to another exciting episode of Plant Life 850. Today we are just doing a garden tour update, or maybe my first garden tour. I don't really know what you would call this, but I'm definitely doing an update and showing you what I've got growing on in the ground over at my main site. This is my mom's house, and I am trying to establish all of the best things over here. We've got things growing from corn to beans. We've got watermelons and pumpkins. We've got all different kinds of hibiscuses. And I have good selection of fruit trees in the ground so far. And I'm definitely looking forward to putting more in later on this month. So here we go with the tour and uh, stay tuned. Are staring at the east side of the property. To my right is the south. Here we have my collection of leaves that I have yet to disperse in the yard, but as I get more wood chips dumped on the outside, I use the leaf. I've been putting the wood chips down first and then putting the leaves on top. It's a little bit easier to spread that way. So over here we have a loquat tree. These loquats are small, but they are very sweet. And sometime this year, I hope to be grafting other varieties onto this loquat try to see if I can make a cocktail loquat tree. Here we have some plants that I had brought to the farmer's market to sell. I didn't really sell very many. Probably just sold like a basil and a mulberry. Here we have uh, African blue basil. Got some taro. I just took this from the store, put it in the dirt, and uh, here we go. We got some beautiful elephant ears. I'll probably plant these out if no one buys them at the next farmer's market. Here's some little sunflowers. These are teddy bear sunflowers. Looks like that one's making some seeds. These are some of the better or bigger mulberry cuttings. The remaining coconuts I have are doing great. I water them every single day. Some green, new leaves. Bought some pink blueberries from Lowe's. These were only $10. Boom, pink blueberries. Over here we got some of my nuts. This is a black walnut. Look how beautiful that is. This is interesting. This one is a Chinese chestnut. Down here we have pecans. I have two over here so far. These here are blueberry tomatoes. Here's another black walnut. Next to the loquat tree we have a persimmon. Mother says that it's been there for years. I don't know what she wants me to do about it. I think it's fine. I just gotta mulch it up, I suppose. Here I have one of my yellow coconuts in the ground. I probably should mulch it to help with water retention, but so far, you know, it's alive. I probably should trim it a little bit, but so far, we're doing good. Next to the coconut, we have a fig tree here. Not really sure what kind, probably just your basic uh, brown turkey fig. Here we have the mulch. Now almost everywhere, well especially in this area here, it's mulched at least eight to ten inches to completely block off any of the light getting to the grass. Over here I have some other coconuts just chilling by a sprinkler that's broken and I have them set up this way so that way it'll hit the sprinkler the sprinkler will hit the leaves and just drop down into the pot. So these have been getting watered every day. And they are doing great. Here's Wilson. We all know Wilson, yes. I you should do a montage of Wilson's growth because he was just an itty bitty baby. Just had one little leaf coming out when I first got him. No roots either. Here we have one of the coconut babies. I haven't decided on a name yet, but I don't think this one's gonna make it. Sad times. Over here in this corner, I have a big old trash can full of leaves and uh, ash from a bonfire pit. I will be sprinkling those on my sweet potatoes and potatoes probably in a month or two. Over here we've got a gardenia. Great for bringing in pollinators and it's really fragrant. Over here, I have these set up over here because there's a sprinkler and this is one of the shadiest spots in the yard. And the, the, uh, the miracle fruit is flowering quite a bit. Oh. 
soon I will have berries. Wow, look, it is just covered in flowers. Tons of flowers. All of this material here, I haven't necessarily decided what I want to do with it all. I'm probably going to try making some Hugo culture beds. I am going to burn some of it. And I'll probably also just take some sticks and throw them around the yard. So we all the mycelium can start eating them. Here we have logs that I will use to line the rows with. Turning more inward. Oh look, we have a peach. This peach here is the Florida Queen, developed by University of Florida. These are not on the Florida Guard rootstock. Below the peach tree, we've got perennial peanut growing beautifully. And on the other side, I put a mimosa strigulosa, also known as the sunshine mimosa. This is a vining ground cover. It is also a sensitive plant. It has a long tap root, but it's not aggressive. So it won't choke out any of your plants, but it will definitely help prevent erosion. And those two plants are here to give nitrogen to this tree, so I never had to fertilize it. For each tree, I also have a Mexican sunflower, Tithonia diversifolia planted. So as this gets bigger, I'm gonna chop it, drop it, and it'll become the new mulch. I have three of these planted over here. This is called a hibiscus cannabina. It is, I believe you can eat the leaves, but I'm not really sure. I, I believe this is an edible leaf, uh, hibiscus as well and the leaves look kind of like, you know, they're supposed to get bigger and more defined. But right now the growth has been stunted a little bit. They're making seed pods. Plus some seeds. Next to the peach tree, we have some shade loving plants that I have put over here just to be protected. I haven't necessarily decided where I'm going to put those in the ground just yet. So there they stand or sit. This is a soursop tree. I had picked this up from Lowe's over a year ago. Growth has been stunted due to the cold weather. It lost all of its leaves, but now it's coming back. I haven't decided if I want to put this here yet, so it's still in the pot. Over here, we've got this sweet almond bush. I need to just put it in the ground, maybe take some cuttings from it. But this makes a flower cluster, just like the butterfly bushes. It attracts pollinators and has a very perfumey scent to it. Over here, facing the north side of the property, we have tons of plants in the ground. Take me over two days to put all these in here. I do need to come through and thin some of them, but for right now, I think there's plenty of space for everything to grow to a decent size. We'll just go through a couple of things that we've got growing on. So what I did in each one of these spots is I dug kind of a largish hole and I put a few different plants in each one. We've got some sunflowers here. I got an African blue basil. And I've also got little cucamelons here. Probably should have thinned them, but you know, it's whatever. We'll do fine. We'll do fine. They're doing okay so far. But the idea is to hopefully maybe the sunflowers will grow fast and then the cucamelons will grow up the sunflowers because they're these tiny little watermelon looking like cucumbers. In some spots I have uh, like this pigeon pea, it's doing so well. I have a lot of African blue basil, so I tried planting it out as much as possible, because again, I can always thin things out. Right here I do have either a lemon balm or some type of mint. And then some sort of a vining plant. I believe that's either a, uh, squash or watermelon or pumpkin. This one looks like a watermelon. Could even be a loofah, not really sure. Some plants are obviously bigger than others. If we go down here, somehow everything seems to be more booming. I don't know if it's because they get extra water. It's probably because of the extra water. Well, look at this. This is a pumpkin. I believe this is the giant jack-o'-lantern pumpkin. There are two plants in here as well. Probably should have thinned them, but look at how cute it is. I wanna come through and just plant a bunch of sunflower seeds, but the birds will probably eat them. So I'm gonna start with more sunflower seeds inside. Look at this one. 
some of this African blue basil is really booming. Look at that. So pretty, smells so fragrant. There are some plants that look like they might be a little crowded, but at the same time, I think they're loving it. Like we got this basil here. And this is probably a pumpkin or a, a watermelon, probably a pumpkin. And a sunflower, it's doing so good. This was just a lazy way of me putting things in the ground without having to put a single hole and measuring out how much spacing I want. Put it all in there and I'll separate it out later. Here we have my butternut tree. Not really sure how I feel about all those roots right now. So let's just, uh, just cover that up, there we go. Boom, protected. This is a butternut tree. Hopefully, I'll get some nuts within the first three to five years of me planting it. But I do believe this is a two-year-old to three-year-old tree. Of course, on the bottom, we've got the perennial peanut, sunshine mimosa, but also this Mexican sunflower. I might have put it a tad too close, but then I'm like, no, you know, gonna leave it like I said I can always move things later here I have placed a soursop tree it's happy so far also with a sunshine mimosa and perennial peanut also it turns out that the perennial peanuts do make make some peanut they're not very prolific but you can harvest some nuts this back corner I have placed two rows of mulberries and then planted a bunch of stuff within those mulberries the kale is doing all right here we have pigeon pea, the African blue basil, Okinawan spinach. We have one of the toilet paper plants. This is mullein, very fuzzy leaf. Here's some of the calendula bouncing back from being transplanted. This is katuk. This is a variegated kind. This is chaya. This is called something like shiso, shiso spinach or Brazilian spinach, I believe. Over here facing the west side of the yard, we have my corn rows. My corn is spaced out, you know, maybe a foot or more apart. And I do have plants interplanted within them. I do have a few kinds of squash. I've got pigeon peas, I've got dragon tongue bean. But the corn's doing good. It's not being nibbled on that I can see. I believe all the squashes we have in here are patty pan style squashes, which means it's a flat yellow squash. Not really sure which one this one is, but it's really pretty. I'm not really too concerned about all of these popping up. I believe this is just miner's lettuce. This is an edible green, and if it's covering the ground and absorbing some of that carbon and putting it into the ground, that's all that matters. So my mom's trying to do some trellis type thing with this bamboo over here. She used zip ties. She's got some cucumbers or something growing up those. And her calamansi. She's got this tangerine here. I really need to prune it up for her. So as a bonus, I discovered my mother already has white ube growing over here. That's what this looks like. This is related to the Morning Glory family, or it's part of the Morning Glory family. Like we've got this really big vine here. So that's exciting. I just gotta figure out how to clean up this area. Leave the, you know, I wanna leave most of this vegetation. I'm not actually going to mulch it or anything here because it's just so lush and green and short and whatever. She's put some tomatoes here. I did not do this. I wouldn't, I wouldn't have put the tomatoes here. And there's my makeshift nursery. A puddle of water in it. I'll deal with that later. It's supposed to rain again tomorrow. But over here, clearly, this is where the septic tank is. Maybe it's right before all that. I'm not really sure. I need to get some expert advice on it but I am kind of planting things around this space. I'll get some bananas in here. I did put sugar cane in. But whatever this stuff is, I like it. It's lush, it's cute, it's 
you know, there's like buttercups growing within it. So I'm just gonna leave it as is and let it do, let it do its thing. I might trim it back, but really what's the point, you know? Just kinda wanna see what's gonna happen. Over here at the end of the septic tank, hopefully, away from it, whatnot, we've got a few different kinds, or a couple different kinds of sugar cane. This is a Hilo Buddha. This is a dwarf Hawaiian variety. Hopefully by the, before the end of the year, we'll be harvesting some sugar cane. But I have two of those in there. And these three plants are a red sugar cane. I believe this is a Florida native. So it should do very well over here. So this mound over here, see those little green things? Those are seminal pumpkins. I wanna get some, maybe I should plant some sunflowers right in the middle here. That'd be pretty cool. But I transplanted these over here a couple days ago. I feel like I should have put them on the other side of the yard because I believe seminal pumpkins like a little more shade than they will be getting here. But this very large one seems to be doing all right. And these can be very prolific once established. And I also have a couple hundred more seeds I could start if these failed. Over here, my mother has a plant that she put in years ago, probably because she likes the color purple. But this is called the Rose of Sharon. She was asking what to do about all of this fungus. She's like, what am I supposed to do about this fungus? And I'm like, nothing, it's just eating the bark. You know, it's not hurting your plant any. So just leave it. But what do you guys think this is? Do you think this is old man's beard? Or is it the other one that's like not old man's beard? It is very dry though. So whatever they are, they are just dried up. You just pull it off, I guess. Now we have mulch. Um, I put this red cabbage here. This was from the other house. It is getting a little bit of bug damage being over here, but if this is the only thing that gets eaten while the other ones don't, then I'm okay with that. I do have quite a few chayas in the ground. I probably have at least 10 of these in the ground right now, which will be great for a summertime stir fry green, or to even put it in soups. Here we have one of my edible leaf hibiscuses. This one is called Abel Moscus Manihot. This one specifically is Tonga, probably because it looks like a tongue. These leaves will get huge, like bigger than this huge. And you can eat this raw or cooked, like you would spinach. And I actually have four different, I guess, strains of Abel Moscus Manihot. Here we have Tonga. This one is called Kiko's Crump. This one is Chief Kubo's Prize. And we have this one over here. It is a variegated, broad-leafed uh, hibiscus. You can kind of see the variegation there a little bit. Hopefully she pulls through. This is the only one I have. I do have two mangoes planted in the ground. Coconut cream mango. This is a Florida mango, meaning its lineage comes from mangoes, native to Florida at this point. I'll have to find my videos and talk about it because this is my favorite mango. And I should know more about it off the top of my head than I do at this moment, but it has been a minute. I'm not sure how well this is going to come out, but I do have enough space over here between the makeshift nursery and the sweet potato piles so I could get a wheelbarrow in here if I wanted to. Um, but here we have mounds of sweet potatoes. There's probably six or seven different kinds planted in here. Some do have these growth already because I had them sitting in water for months. Like two months at least I believe. And I just kind of planted them sideways, you know. Of course, the main potatoes all up in there. And I left some of this to vine out naturally. 
Most of the mounds do have an African blue basil just because I have tons of it and why not? Over here I do have some uh, Monstera Deliciosa. I will be giving one of these away to a friend's mom. Probably that one over there. And I will plant this in the ground here, probably over by this redwood oak we've got. I tried to identify it through my plant app and it came up as like a Shermwood something oak. I plan on taking this tree down in the future. Not exactly sure what it is. It looks kind of like a crab apple. But I think it's probably just a crepe myrtle. A type of crepe myrtle anyways. But I don't really want it if it's not an oak. But in the meantime, I will be planting something like these coffee plants underneath it. This is a um, dwarf wild coffee, Psychotria nervosa. It makes a coffee bean, yes, um, and you can eat the fruit around the bean. And this is really great for pollinators because it has these really tiny flowers that they love and know what they are. This here is a purple ube that I will be planting underneath using the tree as a trellis and just let it go wild. I probably have 10 to 15 of these edible leaf hibiscus plants in the ground so I will have tons of greens to eat during the summertime. This is going to be one of my favorite plants or I mean it already is one of my favorite plants. This is a variegated pink lemon tree. This is from a cutting and yes, the lemons are pink on the inside. Even the lemon on the outside is variegated. But it'll be really great to make tea with it. Or even pink lemonade. I guess we could go through a little bit of what I got growing in the nursery. Here I've got more pigeon pea. This is the Florida Everglades tomato, I believe. This is another variegated pink lemon. Here we have Galapagos tomatoes. I was thinking that you should do very well here. This plant is cool. It is a yellow strawberry tree, I believe. I bought this off eBay from Flying Fox Fruits. And he's got tons of things on there that go for very high prices. And I just thought it would be really cool to own something from him. I bought this and so far I haven't killed it and that's all that matters. Probably should trim it up, take cuttings from it. Here we have a brown edible canna plant. Um, this was given as a as part of a deal for other root crops that I bought off the internet. Like this uh, orange turmeric over here. Here we've got some Ethiopian kale. Here are my slightly neglected but still living Florigard peach rootstock. Just look at how pretty that is. The benefit of this rootstock is that it is nematode resistant and uh, they had released it in 1991 from University of Florida. All of my mulberries over here. Some are sad looking. Leaves need to be repotted is all. They're fine. Here I've got more purple ube. I had ordered these tubers from eBay and I'm very excited to be planting these somewhere soon. Obviously they need to be planted. And then in uh, eight months to a year I will be harvesting purple ube. Here I've got, it's supposed to be some black knight turmeric. She's got this um, Japanese purple eggplant. Got some green okra over here. Got chives. I don't know what this is supposed to be. Either ginger or turmeric. I've got the Zamia family over here. This is 
Zamia furfuraceae, also known as the cardboard palm. Next to it, we have the Kunti palm. I believe this one is Zamia integrifolia, while this one is Zamia humilla. But at the same time, they could also be interchanged. But I don't know. I'm going to put them in the ground and see if this one softens up like this. But this one is a male plant, while this one is a female plant. I really should plant out my tomatoes today, but here's an overview of the yard. Alright, so I'm sitting in my car because I was getting bit up by ants. So I'm going to do my closing here before I forget. Um, so I know a lot of people are wanting to grow food now because they want more food security. We don't really know what's going to happen with this whole coronavirus thing. Things are opening back up and people are still getting sick and who knows how long this could last. But one thing you could do for yourself and for your health and for your long-term wealth is to grow your own food. Even if it's you know, it's not like you have to grow 100% of your stuff. You can still go to the grocery store, get your rice, get your corn, get your potatoes, things that are cheap and affordable, but also grow things that you can't buy in store, like African blue basil. You can't buy that in store. One thing to keep in mind is to not be discouraged when you have failures in the garden. Yes, you're going to have pests. Yes, you're going to have plants that die. But when it comes to gardening, you will have more failures than success because Really, all we're trying to do is just kind of steward the plants into growing. We can't make them grow, but we can definitely give them the best conditions possible to thrive. So if you put the time and energy into researching your soil, researching your materials, and collecting the right materials to use, you'll do fine. Uh, most of the materials I have used are free wood chips and free bags of leaves that I just drove around my neighborhood and collected. I did collect like over 200 bags before I started using them, but you don't have to do that. You can just take a couple trips, empty them out, and just do that a couple times a day. And eventually you'll have an entire backyard full of leaves that you can grow in. And here in Florida, since it's always hot and humid and rainy and whatnot, even though it wasn't rainy for 30 days and we just got a bunch of rain, um, things break down a lot faster here than they do other places. So all of those wood chips and leaves and stuff, like they're not really gonna be here by the end of the summer. And if anything, I'm gonna be constantly putting in more just to help build up the soil. And uh, this time next year, we'll see. Maybe we'll have a few inches of topsoil built up. Definitely a lot faster than what Mother Nature can do. Mother Nature, I think a rainforest can create an inch of topsoil every 150 years. So if I can create a few inches of topsoil in one year, it's pretty good. I spent most of my money on the plants themselves, of course, and I did buy um, $250 worth of topsoil. Uh, it was six yards delivered to my house. I really should have shopped around before I paid for that because I could have gotten uh, double the amount for the same price from an actual company. but. Whatever, I help that guy out. Growing food could be as easy or as simple as you want to make it. If you want to put all of the money into infrastructure and make raised beds and do all that, you can go ahead and do that. Some people want to. They want to have that nice, clean looking, you know, aesthetically pleasing type of yard. But I think once all of my plants are established and they're big and beautiful and I can harvest, uh, you know, leaves and flowers for tea and I'm harvesting cucumbers and watermelons. Like, I'm not really gonna care what my yard looks like because it's all just gonna be so beautiful, so magical, so abundant, so productive. And I'm very excited for everything that's growing on at the moment. So I just want to encourage you, encourage you to go and fail in the garden. But I'll end it here in my car because I was getting bit up by ants, so. I hope you guys have a great day and uh, leave me some comments below, maybe some advice on how to grow the things that I'm growing. This is my very first year of actually putting things in the ground. Um, I'm kind of an experienced container gardener, been doing that for seven years, but now I'm definitely looking forward to just putting everything in the ground and letting the worms do all the work for me.
So what are you growing in your yard? Have you started a garden yet? Uh, are you a new gardener? Are you an experienced gardener? What's your favorite thing to grow? What zone are you in? I hope you have a great day. I hope you're washing your hands. Check out My Brother Van's website, music on Spotify. Shout out to Star Colt. And I hope to see you guys in the next one. Take care.